All right, uh, please silent cell phones. Coach, if you could start us off with your uh, perceptions of tonight's game. Yeah, opening statement, you know, um, give Eastern Washington a lot of credit. They played a fantastic first half, played a fantastic great, uh, game. Came out, really shot the ball well, and got us on our heels early. Um, I was very proud of our basketball team and who we were in not going away. I think that's been our identity all year long, that uh, we've handled adversity very, very well. And there wasn't any question in my mind at halftime, whatever we were down, 16 points or whatever, um, that we weren't going to make a game of it. And our guys did. They battled. They fought. They scratched uh, right to the very end. You know, you, you look at how they, how they just competed uh, like they have all year. That's a team that went and got 20 wins just competing, you know, just battling and competing. They played our way for 40 minutes. Uh, give Eastern Washington a lot of credit. They made some shots at the end to seal the deal. But give our guys a lot of credit for not going away. Brandon Colton, one of us from Skyline Sports. What, what did you guys do to, to cut into the lead? You guys are down 21, but then you started chipping away, cut it all the way down to five. Uh, it was actually four. Were you watching? Oh, yeah, four. I'm right. just kidding. <laughs> well, we just we didn't give up. We got into the locker room. We told each other that we was going to just go all out. Why not? 20 minutes of hell. And that's what we did. We tried to go out there and give it our all, especially your seniors, just knowing that you never know. Every day, I mean, it's not. Like, we ain't expected to end like this, but at the same time, we're going to try to hold our head high. But we just stayed together, and we told each other to just stay, stick together. It's, a, it's we, not me, like we've been doing the whole year. So I felt like that's what really made us put an edge on our shoulder and just try to show everybody that we're not going to go out like that, but we're going to try to come back and win it. So. Bryce, what did you think it took to, to keep fighting like you guys did? Um. Just to keep battling, not giving up, knowing the game wasn't going to end right then and there. We still had time on the clock. We still had things to do. Just uh, picking each other up, uh, being more aggressive, attacking the basket. Coach Blizznik, obviously the focal point every night. But when some of the other guys step up and hit shots early, uh, does that change the way you go about defending them? Well, that, that stung us a little bit. We got stung early with some guys you know, being very aggressive, shooting it early. And they made some, some threes early in the game. I think they had seven at halftime. Then they made three more in the second half. We didn't shoot the ball great from three, only five for 21. Um, give them credit. But you know, I'm really proud of our guys. You know, If you evaluate and look at our schedule, and and what we've gone through, not having a home court and this and that. And then we, we have 20 wins. This team has 20 wins. And this program's only had 20 wins five times in 75 years. So uh, we have plenty to put our chins up about and, and put our shoulders back and hold our heads high. We want to play postseason. We want to keep playing. These guys love playing basketball. Um, so I'm proud of a lot of our accomplishments. And I'm, and I'm proud that we're broken hearted. I'm proud that you have two guys up here crying, you know, because I would be really worried that um, we have we didn't have the right program if we weren't hurt after a game like this. I would be concerned about who we are and what we have accomplished in our short year, in 11 months, I guess. I would be worried that if guys didn't care and they weren't emotional, um, that we hadn't done a good enough job as a staff of getting things right. Bryce, what was this year like, you know, having to play a different gym for a first-year head coach, but then to have as much success as you had at Portland State during your career? Um, this is probably the best and most uh, fun I've had in my basketball career my whole life. Uh, him being a first-time head coach and all the players that we had, what we were able to accomplish in such an amount of time was, like, really special to me. It's going to stick with me. And I just think the way we are able to come together every game fight through not having the home court fight, having more road games and whole games. The whole season just shows what we were made of, and it never broke us. It brought us closer together. And it's just, that's just something that's really special to me. How about for you, Brandon? What was this experience like this year? Yeah, I just don't know. Been losing all my life. Coach Barry Perry, I love you. Love you. Love you. I wasn't even, my head wasn't even into none of this last year. 
This man came in and, and boosted everyone's confidence. From the basketball team, from the football team, to the girls basketball team, to the track team. I just never been around a team like this though. I never been around a coach like this. I had a lot of good coaches in my life, but he's like, he just brung a lot to the table and it's like he never, never wanted us to look down on ourselves. He always told us to keep our head up. It's we over me. I would never forget that. I hope the guys that's watching this and that's going to look back at this team years from now, I hope they never forget that. Portland State basketball is we, never me. I do all I, every, I mean, just the success period, I don't even know. Like, just all of this stuff this year, I, I just, I bought into the system. And I feel like every, every other person on the team bought into the system from the coaches to the managers. Everybody was 10 toes down and we was all together at any time, even when we did have our worst moments. It's just hard to be up here just knowing that we're not going to be able to continue and just conti continue to be with each other, even if we do get another chance. This was our goal right here. And we ain't want to let nobody down, but at the same time, we hope we could start something new for Portland State. We hope we can keep it going. I hope I could come back. Next, I could come back whenever and just encourage the guys to just be great, be better than us. And I really appreciate everything at Portland State. I love it. I'm a Viking for life. If you get a chance, uh, will you continue to play? If you, will you guys take a postseason bid? You bet. Yeah, we want to keep playing. We want to keep. Uh, you know, we want the experience. We want the opportunity. And like these guys are, you know, this emotional group and they care about each other. And the last thing I said in the locker room is, is you know, I, I'm glad that we're hurt because, like I told you a minute ago, I'd be, I'd be really concerned if we weren't hurt. But let's embrace it and appreciate it and be humble about what we've accomplished. And let's see if we can go to another tournament and do some more damage. Um, really proud of this group. And, and you know, <clears throat> I'll be emotional about this. But, you know, when I got the job, the first thing I talked about in the press conference was simply this senior group. and with the construction and things that we had going on, I was very, very concerned that this group could get lost in the shuffle in other people's minds, not my mind, but others in other people's mind about people talking about the future or talking about this $51 million arena that we were building. And so my commitment from day one, when I got behind the mic on the first day there and looked at him in the eye, you know, before I really knew him, and just said, you know, I'm all about now. I'm all about you guys. And this is your year. And you only get to be a senior once. And I really wanted to validate them. I really wanted them to appreciate it. And no matter where we played, no matter who we played, I wanted them to embrace the fact that this was their year. And maybe the younger guys got a little bit sick of me saying that this was their year. But that's the way it goes. And as guys grow up in our system, it'll be their year when it's their time. And so I, I think that, um, you know, we talked a lot about you know, win games and being on the wall forever is something that we'll always talk about. You know, be so special that you can be on the wall forever. And I think this group really did that. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you.